much more <laughs> Yeah, I know. Good evening, everyone. What are you doing? Nothing right now. We on? Yeah, we're on. He's came over someday. He goes. Welcome to the Maryville Town Council meeting. Today is Tuesday, March 14th at 6.30. Please stand for our invocation and remain standing for a moment of silence. Let us pray. Oh, gracious God, we give you thanks for this day that you've given to us and the opportunity we have to serve you in our various ways. We ask for your blessings upon those who deliberate today, especially that this would be for the betterment of our community and the world in which we live. Help us to be faithful. Help us to be giving. Help us to care. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Remain standing for a moment of silence, please. Mr. Hardaway, would you lead us in a pledge tonight? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Thank you all. Madam Clerk Treasurer, call the roll, please. Vice President Hardaway? Here. Councilman Spann? Councilman Minchuk? Here. Councilwoman Uslak? Here. Councilman Pettit? Here. Councilman White? Here. President Bella? Here. Six present, we have a quorum. Moving on tonight to petitions, communications, acknowledgments, and remonstrations. We are honored tonight to have the swearing in ceremony for officers Jacob Shrewsbury, Timothy Michaels, and Philip Mason. Chief Newsis? Do you have the um, swearing-in documents? Oh, the judge. I'm sorry, Judge. Come on up, please. <laughs> well, now. Judge Eugene Velasco. I didn't see you, Judge. You look camouflaged. <laughs> <laughs> trying to say you little brother. <laughs> so, guys, please come up and stand behind the table and face the audience that way. Same with the officers. <coughs> And please use the uh, microphone. Yeah, to, just to judge on that side. Yep. Okay. Gentlemen, would you identify each of you? Timothy Michaels. Jacob Shrewsbury. Philip Mason. Gentlemen, please repeat after me. I. 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 Say your name. Philip Mason. Solemnly swear. Solemnly swear. That I will support. That I will support. The Constitution of the United States of America. The Constitution of the United States of America. And the Constitution of the State of Indiana. And the Constitution of the State of Indiana. And that I will faithfully. And I will faithfully. Impartially. Impartially. And honestly. Honestly. Discharge my duties. Discharge my duties. As a police officer of the Maryville Police Department of the town of Maryville. As a, As a police, police officer, officer of the Maryville Police Department of the Town of Maryville. According to the law. According to the law. And the best of my skills. And the best of my skills. And ability, so help me God. And ability, so help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. All right. Chief Newses, would you like to say a couple words? Wherever you'd like. You're the chief. <laughs> 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 Chief.
just to give a little bit of an introduction to the newly sworn officers, uh, Jacob Shrewsbury is uh, one of our new guys. He's from, originally from Lay Station, he's a River Forest graduate. He's going to be attending the academy here shortly. And as um, soon as he does that, he'll be on the road. The other two are uh, former Maryville officers. And uh, being in the police business right now is kind of a rough time. You're not getting applicants like we used to, but I was very happy that these guys came back along. And they're uh, bringing back quite a bit of experience and making it easier for us because uh, nobody really wants to be the police anymore. So I'm happy to have everybody back aboard. Great. Thank you, Chief. And congratulations again, officers. And probably the most important thing is just be careful out there. Uh, so, Chief, I guess Officer Nicholas Inhert couldn't make the uh, meeting tonight. Do you want to explain? And we're going to do that at a different time? Yes. If possible, we can do that at the next meeting. He had um, issues with child care. Okay. Thank you. Moving on tonight to the uh, waste management two-year option contract renewal. We discussed this in a workshop at great length. Um, we need to approve the uh, option four, which is um, our last two-year contract extension. I'm sorry, option three, which is April 1st through March 31st of 2024. And option four, it is both, April 1st through March 31st of 2025. Mr. Svetnoff, do we just need a simple motion for that? We just need a simple motion for that. Motion to approve. Second. And motion by Mr. Hardaway with a second by Mr. White for approval of the two-year option for waste management. Questions or discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> and motion carries. Thank you. Also tonight, I want to ask for a motion to add to the agenda a BZA action. Uh, this would have in regards to the Crossroads Plaza. It didn't make the first agenda, and I just want to make sure we're covered. And we will add that under BZA and large gathering actions. So moved. Motion by Mrs. Uslak. Second. Second by Mr. Minchuk to add this item to the agenda. Open for discussion. Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries. Thank you. Moving on tonight to the consent agenda, we have the accounts payable register voucher approval for March 14th and the approval of the town council meeting minutes February 28th. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Pettit, second by Mrs. Uslak for approval of the consent agenda. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries. Moving on tonight to standing and special committee reports, budget and finance, Mr. Hardaway. No report at this time, Mr. President. Council Affairs, Mr. Pettit. No report. Street Department, Mr. Minchuk. Yes, sir. I have uh, two contacts here from Hubinger Landscaping. One is in reference to the planters at 93rd Avenue. Um, they went ahead and did all the spring cleanup, did all the upkeep on them. That bill came to $3,169.00. The second was for the all the planters here at the town hall um, to upkeep those as well um, as far as what any other thing, anything else that needed to be done with them. That total came to be $2,663.00. So these are actually contracts, uh, right, Mr. Minchuk, for the that future is for this year? Okay. So, did you have a motion to approve? I'll make that motion to approve both. Second. <coughs> motion by Mr. Minchuk, Minchuk, second by Mr. Hardaway for approval of the Hubinger contracts for this year. Open for discussion. Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. You guys are easy tonight. Anything else on Street Department? I, I got one thing, Mr. President. Mr. I think that, you know, when we changed around the uh, committees. I think uh, utilities falls under street department now. Uh, we actually removed that. Uh, yeah, but so I, 
I guess I'm just going to go with it for right now. Oh, okay. Uh, all right. Uh, last Wednesday, we had a meeting, our team, including consultants from uh, Robinson Engineering. Uh, we've taken the lead seeking options to address infiltration and influ, which impacts Maryville residents in Meadowland and Meadowdale. Last Wednesday, we had a productive meeting with the EPA director of the Office of Wastewater Management. Uh, the guy's name is Dr. Andrew Sawyers and his staff to discuss our goals, including our interest in having a logistics, Gary Sanitary, uh, a logistics. Gary Sanitary District would have to be a primary applicant since this is their infrastructure and we can be a supportive partner. To move this effort forward, we concluded that our best option is to look at the Indiana State Revolving Funds Loan Program. Therefore, we have set up a meeting with Jeff McGough, Indiana Finance Authority Director of Environmental Programs, this Friday at 10 a.m. to get all details regarding the uh, SRF program. Once we have a pathway to funding, we can coordinate with Gary representatives to present our proposal to move forward. Basically, what this is saying, Mr. President, is that we are really looking at getting this problem rectified in the north end of Maryville. It's been far too long, and the residents have suffered far too long, and now we've got the ear of the federal EPA and the state EPA, so therefore we should see some traction now, and hopefully Gary will be willing to come on board and help us resolve these uh, sewer backup issues. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. President. Mr. White. Um, you said you had removed the utilities from um, street department. Is that what it was? No, it's still there. We're just going to call it street department now. Remember, we had this conversation instead of public works. We really don't have public works. Like so, a, so utilities, I'm not quite understanding what the utilities are. Uh, when, I, when I read in the bylaws, I didn't see anything about the utilities being part of a, a sewer management. Um, I think that okay. probably falls a little bit more on the environmental uh, since that's what it, we all have having environmental laws that govern these things. So i um, like for in the future to think, because this is the first time I heard about the meeting, um, I'd like to make sure that I understand what's going on so we can tell people. All right. Thank you. Elections, public relations, and town beautifications. Mr. Pettit. No report. Environmental affairs, Mr. White. Mr. President, I uh, just want to say in the terms of uh, uh, the COVID standards right now, everything seems to be continues to be stable. Uh, our, uh, our CDC levels, uh, according to the CDC, our levels are low. Um, I haven't heard, seen any, I uh, <clears throat> hate to say the words, mortality rates is probably a better word for it. Uh, I think we're just, even though I've ran into people as, as, as soon as yesterday, actually, they said, hey, don't come close to me because I got COVID. I'm like, thank you. So um, it's still out there, and, but right now I think we're, we're stable here in, in this part of uh, Lake County. Thank you. Personnel policy and employee benefits, Mr. Hardaway. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I, I guess this is to the council, if you had an opportunity to look at the applications for the uh, assistant parks director. Still waiting on a response from all you guys, Mr. White, including you. Mm -hmm. So do you, did you guys look at them? Uh, to be honest yes. with you, I haven't, but whatever your recommendation is, I will. Uh, well, Okay, well, I'd like to get something, at least four from each one of you guys, and then okay. we'll look at that, and then we'll make a decision as to who we want to interview. Okay, that's fine. Thank you. Great. That's all I have, Mr. President. Thank you. Public safety, Mr. Minchuk, please let the record show that Mr. Spann had joined us now at um, 644. Hi, Don. Hi. <laughs> Mr. Minchuk. <clears throat> yes, sir. Uh, as far as the FOP contract is concerned, both parties have come to a full agreement and we are ready for the public signing, which will be scheduled for our next town meeting on the 28th. Excellent. <coughs> um, two more things. Uh, congratulations to our new officers. And I see we have in the audience today Commissioner Ward, and it's his birthday. So we'd like to wish you a happy birthday, Gene. And it, I'm not going to say how old he is. Uh, that was just going to ask yeah, how old is Mr. 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 Ward. <laughs> There you go. There you go. 89. Chief, could you arrest him for lying? That's not his age. No way. That is all, sir. Thank you. 
Thank you, Mr. Minchuk. Economic development, Mr. Pettit. Uh, yes, Mr. President, we had a uh, redevelopment commission workshop uh, before this meeting, uh, got an overview of where we stand financially with all the tax increment finance districts, the Maryville Road di uh, TIF, the Broadway Ameriplex TIF, and the Mississippi <coughs> Street TIF district. Um, we instructed, uh, there's one project out of the Maryville Road uh, TIF that we are going to move forward on and instructed our financial advisor, Bob Swentz, to start preparing financial documents. And that would be 86th Avenue between Maryville Road or the stub there into uh, Hunter's Glen and connecting it to the Williamsburg uh, development. Uh, so you would have a continuous run of 86th Avenue between Maryville Road and, and Broadway. So we'll be working on those documents. Um, we also talked about a couple other funding options um, with the, uh, the dog park. Uh, with the school uh, grant that we're um, engaging in with the Maryville School Corporation, uh, and then also funding uh, on the community center. So uh, as Bob gives us information back, uh, I think we're going to have those items on the council workshop agenda in two weeks. Mm -hmm. Correct. Thank you. <clears throat> Parks and Recreation, Mrs. Uslak. Uh, yes, Mr. President. I am looking forward to the spring cleanup with the parks that will include the mowing, and we should be getting a roof on the shelter at Rosenbaum Park. But so far, everything else is okay with the parks and the bike trail, but <coughs> the park department will be out there to check on it. And that's about it for now. So thank you very much. Sure, thank you. Mm -hmm. Moving on to abandoned and blighted properties, Mr. Hardaway. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, had a slight, small conversation with Mr. Reardon today, and one of our major problems is uh, people not paying their garbage bills. Mm. <clears throat> and uh, the majority of the people that aren't paying are have been identified as renters. And so what I've instructed Mr. Reardon to do, rather than going after the renters personally, let's go after the owners of those homes as opposed to the renters, because the owners are the ones that are ultimately responsible for uh, garbage pickup. So if we go after them, then we should be able to resolve this issue because we met with uh, waste management a couple weeks ago, and we are like in the country, one of the top uh, municipalities where people don't pay their bills. And I think that that's just a horrible reputation for us to have size, uh, because of our size. So I'd like to make sure that Mr. Reardon follow up on that, and we'll go after the, the uh, homeowners as opposed to the renters, and Pat, see if we can't get some traction that way. Thank you. And we also have people that are not taking the garbage cans back up. 73rd Avenue by the apartment buildings, they leave their garbage cans out for two or three days, and... Different people are calling me on that, so we should check on that, too. Chief, can you um, make sure that as we do whatever we need to do, that send out, because I think you, well, you've got Ray and Tiffany. I don't know which areas they got in, uh, in Barb. I think Ray's my end of town, and Tiffany is middle, I think, and yeah. then Barb. Barb is south, yes. Yeah, so can we just make sure that uh, as they ride through their prospective areas, that they identify these uh, people and just make sure that they start call it, bringing in their garbage cans after garbage pickup. Sure. Cou Councilwoman, you like, was it the apartments that the, this was a problem at or was it actual residents? Apartments. Okay. 73rd yeah. Avenue apartments. Mm -hmm. All the way to the end. Okay. Uh, Chairman Hardaway, um, I'd like to add to um, a statement that. Uh, I think some of this came about uh, specifically for me. I talked to Pat yesterday. Uh, I got three calls. When I get three calls, I know it's a serious problem out there. And I do appreciate the town of Maryville picking it up the first time, which was last Friday. Uh, by Monday, it was looking the same again. What are you talking about, Leonard? Give us a little. Problem. I'm talking about like with the garbage. Uh, just in uh, general? Yes. Okay. Uh, and th they picked it up, and this a lady says, well, I, I just happened to uh, kind of right past and I seen her coming out and I said, ma'am, you can't put garbage on the ground. She says, well, can I go get another garbage can? So anyways, to make a long story short, um, I, I know exactly what Rich is talking about when we're talking about these people that don't take care of their, their property. So my suggestion would be is that we reach out back to waste management 
If people haven't paid their bill, we need to tag that so we'll know that they didn't pay, and then we'll know how to go to the next step. Um, sometimes they might pay their bill and still uh, just putting out double, double garbage. So I, I just wanted to add to maybe uh, we can ask waste management if people don't have service to tag it, that they don't have it. Thank you. So, Mr. White, if you may recall that when we had our workshop session and actually met with waste management representatives, they're going to provide us now with a monthly report okay. that will have the name and address of the delinquent accounts. Sure. We, we know that we can let code enforcement know. So, so how do we actually stop people if the garbage cans are still out there? I think that maybe waste management, if the, if the, if the service has been gone for 30 days, they need to pull that garbage can because they all, people will continue to use it. And waste management might might write right pass and say, well, if they don't have you know services, so we don't yep. keep on going. However, it does make the community look a little worse than than we like. So I, I was just bringing that to Richard's attention as well, uh, to kind of see if we can tag them. But you're saying that they don't have to tag them. Um, they've we'll got, just, they've they, got they have a they have a system in place they've, already. They've got computers in their lap in their trucks yeah. mm -hmm. that and they know who hasn't paid. And that's why they just ride past those houses. They don't, okay. you know. And they notify the owner. Right. Yes. And, and you know, the, my, my issue is the, the community don't know that they did that. So I'm. Oh, yeah. That's... So what do, what do I do other than take those calls and give it to Pat? Um, well, I, I'll, I'll let Pat get the ear full that he got yesterday. Well, I, I think what we have to do is that we have to, <laughs> once we identify the, the houses. Yes. Then we have to see if the person that not having garbage picked up if they're the owner or if they're renting. Mm -hmm. and then if they're renting, then we know that we tag it that way, and mm -hmm. then we go after the, the owner of the house as opposed to going after the renter. I agree. Thank you. That wasn't just my follow-up to that question. Thanks. Uh, Dean and Barbara White Community Center, Mr. Pettit. Uh, yes, Mr. President. We have an ordinance and a resolution. Uh, at the appropriate time, I'll have Trista Hudson come up and go through that. We went through this at the workshop, uh, but just have her give a thumbnail uh, on these two when it's time. Great. Uh, special projects, Mr. Hardaway. Thank you, Mr. President. A uh, couple things real quick. Uh, our first Juneteenth meeting will be next week, next Thursday, March 23rd, 11 a.m. It's going to be here at Town Hall. And again, I offer out to any Maryville resident that's interested in being a part of the committee to please come out uh, next Thursday. Uh, and if you know of anyone that would like to be a vendor, please get that information to Mrs. Shine so that we can start uh, looking at the vendors. I will be reaching out to uh, the vendors from last year because the majority of them said that they wanted to uh, return this year. So we want, we're going to reach out to them and as well as add some new vendors to this year's festivities. So uh, please contact Mr. Shine if you're interested in being on the committee. Uh, Mr. Hardaway, when's our date again, just for the audience, please? For the for first meeting? For Juneteenth? Uh, the, for Juneteenth is uh, June the 17th. Right. It'll be from 12 to 5 p.m. at the community center. Great. Thank you. Thank you. And then don't forget uh, May the 9th, Municipal Day here at uh, Town Hall for our council meeting then. Uh, we still have our uh, 4th of July fireworks on July the 3rd and our 4th of July parade on the next day. So we're looking for a great time for those things. There'll be other events forthcoming, but that, that gets us at least till July. Thank you. Hey, Mr. Hardaway, the... Uh the 3rd of July, fireworks are going to be at the high school again this year, is yes. that right? Yes, okay. yes, yes. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to Department and Commission reports, Lake County Solid Waste Management. Mr. White is our representative. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. <clears throat> Actually, the meeting is this Thursday, oh. uh, so we meet bi-monthly, so I will not probably be able to present a report until after we go, to, uh, we have this meeting this week. Thank you. So I guess that goes no report. Thank Northern you. Indiana Regional Planning Commission, NERPC, Mr. Hardaway. Our meeting is Thursday as well, Mr. President. Very good. Mr. Reardon, is there any report for stormwater management? No, sir, not at this point. South Shore Visitors and Convention Authority, Mr. Reardon. Um, I want to remind the council that uh, Thursday the 16th, 
uh, 6 o'clock to 8 p.m. at Culinary Misfits in Crown Point. Uh, the uh, uh, South Shore Convention and Visitors Authority will be hosting a legislative update. And our next meeting is uh, actually um, just before this event. Oh, okay. Thank you. Uh, fire Territory, Mr. Minchuk or Mr. Spann? Uh, we have a meeting scheduled for the 22nd. Okay. Uh, department head reports. I see Lisa's here from Parks Department. Hi. Thank you. Um, just wanted to let you know that we have a big um, MMA fight coming up on this coming Saturday from 5 to 11 p.m. Um, and then the following weekend, we have the uh, gymnastics competition over in, our, in our facility. I'm not sure the times on that one. Okay. So, other than that, there's that's all that's going on this month. <laughs> okay. Busy. Thank you. Police Chief Nusis. Thank you, Mr. President. I just wanted to touch on the ordinances. I know we kind of talked about them, and I wanted uh, everybody else to know we're still working uh, with our ordinances. Um, we're going through and making sure that we have the proper wording and whatnot in them so we can enforce them and, um, you know, make them to the point where we can use them to address the problems that we have. So uh, I've been going out with some of the ordinance officers and driving around and spotting out different uh, issues that I see are a problem. So we've been looking at it and we're, uh, we're working on finding solutions. Some of them are easy. Some of them we just issue citations or ordinance violations to the um, property owner. And then sometimes if it's a vehicle that's violating, we'll do both. But that's what we've been doing. Um, as a update on the animal control officer, our um, time for applications just closed. So we had, it looks like two, maybe three applications for the animal control position. And we're going to get moving forward with that as well. Um, tonight, just wanted everybody to know if you see some extra police activity throughout the town of Maryville, they have the uh, joint... Um, uh, agency task force going where it's going to be a blitz with several different agencies throughout Lake County um, just going out and doing proactive police work anywhere from Maryville to Gary to uh, I believe Hammond as well is what they're going to get but uh, so don't we'll be, out be driving home right <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. okay or coming here <laughs> thank you chief <laughs> chief Stein, I'm anything? sorry mr. president I did have a question for chief here mr. Yes. White uh, Chief, in the terms of when we have the communities helping us to uh, do blitz and things, so primarily are they on like the main streets or are they any parts of the neighborhoods that, because I think that's that's where some issues that I know we can see the big issues on, on Broadway and Taft Street, but inside the communities, that, is there anything they'll be doing with that? Sure, when uh, they usually call me and ask me what areas we're having issues with, and I, uh, I address those areas and ask the areas that they saturate into. Okay, thank you. Ms. Shine, anything to add besides your BZA action later? No, Mr. President, thank not you. at this time. Angie Chilcutt, Economic Development. Thank you. Um, we diligently been working, fielding multiple uh, inquiries for development coming to the town of Maryville, and um, that's keeping us very busy, very exciting. The interest there, the interest level is uh, pretty pretty high. Um, also, so we welcome that, and we continue, we want to continue to grow. Um, also, an update on our video. It's, I'm so glad to say it's finally done. I actually received the final version today. So we'll be working on a plan and a process to roll that out to everyone and get our marketing um, exposure out there. Great. Mr. Reardon, anything to add? Sir, uh, thank you. Just a couple. Uh, a couple of things. Um, you've heard it mentioned before. I think uh, Councilman Pettit uh, took the lead on this. He announced that the uh, uh, one million square foot project uh, out there on Mississippi uh, through Crow Holdings is coming up out of the ground. I just want to let everybody know that there's a great story in the current issue of the Northwest Indiana Business Magazine 
uh, the header is Maryville welcomes one million square foot project. And if uh, you haven't had an opportunity, I would encourage everybody to go out there. It's, uh, it's, it's really significant. It's uh, um, a, a sight to behold and, and just imagine what that building is going to look like once finished and teeming with, with op opportunity and, and employees and, and companies. It's exciting. Uh, the, the other thing I, I, I need to uh, comment on, and there's flyers up here, um, we do have a name for our comp plan. We've talked about a comp plan, talked about it, and the name of our comp plan is Maryville Momentum. And everyone in this room is invited to our kickoff meeting. That kickoff meeting will be 5 to 7 p.m. on Wednesday, March 23rd, at the Dean and Barbara White Community Center, 6600 Broadway. This is the first of perhaps 10 meetings that we will host. Uh, we're really excited. Uh, a lot of time and effort has been spent to get us to this point, and now really the hard work begins. And, and I can't say this enough, and you'll hear it throughout the process. Um, while we have high expectations and hopes for this plan, it will not succeed. It will not be the plan that it should be that this community deserves without your input throughout the process. Thank you. Thank you, Pat. Moving on tonight to general orders, we have a first reading ordinance, Ordinance 23-12, an ordinance of the Town of Maryville, Lake County, Indiana, authorizing additional appropriations in the 2023 budget, specifically the General Fund, Department 6, and authorizing a reduction of appropriations in the 2023 budget, uh, specifically the Parks Non-Reverting Fund. Trista? Good evening. <clears throat> what you have before you is uh, the first of two items on your agenda today to reorganize the Parks Department, which includes the Dean and Barbara White Community Center budget. Part of that, as you see in the middle of the page on 2312, is an additional appropriation for the line item for the parks maintenance crew. That additional appropriation will allow three uh, members of the staff to be paid from the same line so that things are organized uh, in a better fashion. Below that, the second, the bottom half of the page, uh, which is the entirety then of the reduction, is Again, in the goal of organizing the Parks Department budget a little bit better, getting things more in line with the values that are truly needed, uh, reducing some of the various line items so that the total budget comes down to 1.4 million. This reduction, by the way, does not take away from the operational plans that Torrance has for the department and the center. And this doesn't affect any current employees that we already have at the center, is that right? That is completely true. Very good. Mr. Pettit, did you have a motion for us? I have a motion, Mr. President, to approve Ordinance 23-12. Second. You have a motion by Mr. Pettit with a second by Mr. Hardaway for approval on first reading Ordinance number 23-12. <clears throat> Open for discussion. Mr. President, just a, a comment to, to everyone in the audience and everyone watching the video. I hope everyone keeps in mind what this council has tried to do over the last four years uh, to provide an outstanding facility. If you've not been there, I strongly, as Pat said, I strongly encourage you. Lisa, Torrance, Keisha, Barb Young, all of our staff do an outstanding job there. We've had wonderful uh, events there. Governor Holcomb has been here. Um, it's, it's a learning experience. There are growing pains. That's why we have Trista to help us financially. We have Bob Swentz financially to help us on the bonding. Please understand, we're trying to provide a service to the town. It's not intended to strap anybody or cause any anguish or anything. This is for our children. This is for the residents. 
and we've taken great strides, and I want to thank you, Trista, for everything you and Tarrance and Lisa, the staff, have done to get this thing going. We've never been in the community center business. This is brand new to us, so I hope everyone understands that and, and gives it time to mature. Everyone is very proud, including the people that gave us the $10 million gift. The White family is watching this. They are extremely proud of what we've done out there, and hopefully we'll continue a long relationship with them. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Pettit. Any other discussion? Mr. President. Madam Clerk Treasurer. Um, I'd just like to make mention to Trista if she would like to get with our bookkeeper. There are eight line items listed here that do not have the dollar amount shown. So it may be a different dollar amount that we need to approve. You mean items in the current budget that are not here? No, I mean items on the ordinance, for example, labor. You say not shown. Do you mean are different instead of yes. not shown? Okay. They are less than what's shown. I'm not sure exactly what you're saying. I'm sorry. Okay. For example, contractual services, $50,000. It has $40,502 available. So this reduction is as to the budget itself? I understand. Not the remaining um, appropriation the left? the amount of the uh, reduction. Right. There will be some other uh, transfers. There would need to be to help adjust, I think, what you're referring to. All right. I was just advised to ask you to meet with Aurelia. For sure, absolutely, yep. And that's coming as soon as council addresses the ordinance itself. All right. Did you want to read those others into the record at all? Or you if you'd like, I don't have to. You want me to, okay. Yeah. Um, labor, parks not reverting labor, 24,025 and 38 cents. Finance, $25,378.25. Contractual services, again, $40,502.70. Park time staff, $10,815.75. Recreation coordinator, $17,306.23. Part time staff, $70,363.81. Subcontractors, $14,019.20. And the second one for subcontracting, $37,992.50. So for our purposes tonight, those figures, we don't need, really need to worry about um, adjusting those, right? Those are what the balances are. In the fund, right. right. Any other discussion? Hearing none, Madam Clerk Treasurer, roll call, please. Vice President Hardaway? Yes. Councilman Spann? Yes. Councilman Minchuk? Yes. Councilwoman Uslek? Yes. Councilman Pettit? Yes. Councilman White? Yes. President Bella? Yes. Seven ayes, the motion carries. <clears throat> Is there any need for us to suspend the rules and read this on a second reading, either Attorney Svetnoff or Crystal? No, sir. We need a notice published for the next meeting. Very good. Thank you. Moving on tonight to second reading ordinances. We have Ordinance 23-11, Ordinance of the Town of Maryville, Lake County, Indiana, authorizing additional appropriations in the 2023 budget. <coughs> Mr. So Reardon, would you like to give us the background on this? You kind of did it. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Appreciate it. So this ordinance will allow us to uh, pay um, out of this uh, fund that was established uh, as a result of the generous participation of the many attendees at our uh, recent uh, event, the Black History Month celebration dinner. And uh, um, this is a, a, a fund that uh, you know, we hope will be sustained and uh, available for years to come. Very good, thank you. Chair, I'll entertain a motion for approval. Motion to approve. Second. Motion by Mr. Hardaway with a second by Mr. Minchuk for approval of ordinance 23-11 on second and final reading. Open for discussion. Mr. President, I'd like to 
say one thing is to uh, Mr. Reardon, whatever the balance is, that's going to be the balance that we start toward our scholarship program, if I'm not mistaken, that we'll get with the, that's going to run through the Legacy Foundation. Yes. Thank you. Any other discussion? This is a second reading ordinance. I'll open it up for public comment. Is there any public comment tonight on Ordinance 23-11? The amount of the ordinance is $51,875. Seeing no public comment, Madam Clerk Treasurer, roll call, please. Vice President Hardaway? Yes. Councilman Spam? Aye. Councilman Minchuk? Yes. Councilwoman Uzlak? Yes. Councilman Pettit? Yes. Councilman White? <coughs> Abstain. President Bella. Yes. Uh, six with one abstention. The uh, motion passes. Thank you. And we will pass that around for uh, proper signatures tonight, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> Moving on to resolutions tonight, we have resolution 23 07, the resolution of the town of Maryville, Lake County, Indiana. Transferring monies within the 2023 budget, the general fund department six, and within the 2023 budget, parks and non reverting funds. <coughs> this is the companion uh, resolution to what we did earlier. Trista? Uh, as Council President Bella stated, this is a companion uh, resolution to the ordinance we just discussed. It is taking various line items uh, where funds are not needed in the budget itself to transfer them to areas where the money is needed, um, both in the general fund and the non-reverting fund. Again, the goal, organizing the budget a little bit better, getting the budget amounts into line uh, with the actual expenditures that are needed. Thank you. Mr. Pettit, do you have a motion for us? Yes, I do, Mr. President. Res I make a motion to approve resolution 23-07. Second. We have a motion by Mr. Pettit with a second by Mrs. Uslak for approval of resolution 23-07. A variety of line items decreasing and a variety of line items increasing. Uh, the net effect is zero. Open for discussion. Hearing none, this is a resolution. A roll call vote is sufficient. <coughs> All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. Thank you. Sorry. The voice vote, yeah. Yeah, sorry. Um, moving on to the American Rescue Plan AP voucher, Mr. Hardaway. Thank you, Mr. President. AP voucher for tonight is $18,658.05. Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion from Mr. Hardaway with a second by Mr. Spann for approval of the accounts payable voucher for the ARP funds. The amount's $18,658 and a nickel. Any questions or comments from the council? Mr. President. Mr. White. Uh, I'm, I'm supporting the voucher, but what I, I like to see in the future, I know we've been doing a lot of um, home repairs I use an American Rescue Plan. Um, possibly in the future, uh, I think we should look at uh, some other options for using the American Rescue Plan. For an example, um, <clears throat> I would prefer that we spend it on people. Not meaning that people that own homes are not people, but um, for example, we have a huge, very huge problem here in Northwest Indiana and it's called the black maternity death rate between black mothers and their children are dying, uh, the worst in Indiana, and it's basically during the maternity period that they're dying. So I would like to see in the future that if there's some kind of way that we can find out why are these women dying at the rate that they're dying at. Um, actually, I picked up the article from the uh, State of Indiana um, newspaper, uh, Indianapolis newspaper, to say Northwest Indiana has the worst rate of uh, a black maternity, infant, and young women. So I, I just want to find out why is these things happening? Is there some dollars that we can study the issue, or is there some dollars we can make it for prenatal care, or whatever is killing these young people? But right now, it's a lot, 
and to be honest with you, I think they said that we were the third in the nation, not just Maryville, but Northwest Indiana was the, the third in the nation. So I, I would like to look into that real soon to see if we can save some lives. Thank you. We'll ask Mr. Hardaway to take that under advisement for your committee. That'd be okay? Thank you, Mr. White. Moving on tonight to the uh, BZA and large gathering actions, we have one B BZA item. Ms. Shine. Yes, Mr. President, we have one BZA item from Crossroad Plaza. Mr. Anderson. Crossroad Plaza is the applicant and the petitioner. The address is 6110 Broadway. The zoning district is an M2 uh, industrial zoning district, and they are requesting um, a variance of use approval to allow a retail store on 20.606 acres in the M2 limited industrial corridor zoning district. Petitioner is proposing to have a Foreman Mills clothing factory warehouse at the 50,000 square foot vacant site. The site would be located near the west end of the plaza. The mailing address would be 6110B Broadway. Petitioner states that this store would help revitalize an underutilized plaza. The addition of this store will invigorate the plaza and not negatively affect the community. Utilities are already in place from the previous business entity and the egress and ingress will not be altered. The proposed business would join other locations, nation, nationwide Foreman Mills clothing store offering off-price apparel in men's, ladies, kids, and toys, shoes, and home goods. The hours of operation are typically 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. Sunday through Thursday and 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. on Fridays and 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. on Saturdays, and they are closed on Sunday. There will be approximately 100 employees. Petitioner is aware of the camera ordinance. Petitioner has now provided a lease to attorney uh, Swetnoff, and this is for this petitioner only, at this location only, and for this use only. Mr. Anderson. Thank you. you I think tonight? Sheila summed it up pretty well. The lease is in negotiation. The lease was prepared, prepared by the tenant, which is a good sign. That means that they're interested in spending money on the project. Uh, the sprinkler system, which has been an issue, there's been a uh, contract led on that. There is a lot, if Joe's had an opportunity to flip through that lease at all, there's a lot of requirements of the landlord to bring the center up as far as that suite, so there's going to require some additional funds. But it's 50000 it's right next to Ruler, and it should help to fill in the little stores when you have a big store. Plan to be 100 employees. That seems like a dream come true. Well, this is, a, you know, as she described, it's a store in which they have merchandise, new merchandise for sale. And so basically they need employees. That's their estimate. It's 50,000 square feet, so that's a big store. Yeah, it is big. Very big. Think about a grocery Mr. store. Mr. President. Mr. Pettit. Mr. Anderson. Uh, Rich, in the packet under Exhibit B, it's the red store that's highlighted, correct? It's the arrow, yes, it's the, next to Ruler. It's on the well, back. Ruler's right up on 61st Ave. Am I reading this map wrong? No, well, it's right next to Ruler, meaning yep. it would be south of Ruler. <coughs> it would and, be and east. On the west side, a very west side of the plaza. And it would the old be Walgreens? No, 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 on the other side, ultra. on the other layer. It was the Aldi's, actually. Yeah. Ultra. The, the door ultra. says Aldi's on it, if you were to look today. Okay. It's been 100 years. So, so Rulers is on that side. It's the building that runs north and south. All right. Well, I'll give you, Rich, you and I have known each other a long time. I'll give you my two cents, because we went through this once before. We're granting a use variance, ladies and gentlemen, for a property that's zoned M2. At the request of the owner, we, we rezoned it to M2, to house a 250,000 square foot industrial building, which has absolutely no business going on this property. And Rich, you know I voted against it. I'm going to vote for this. In fact, I'll make the motion to approve this because this center needs to be commercial. It doesn't need to be industrial. And I would advise you tell Mr. Israel, 
My thoughts on that, please. This needs to be rezoned back to commercial so he can market it properly. There's no way an industrial building's going up there, Rich. You and I both know that. Part so the, we need to fix that. Just to remember, part of the ordinance that was passed had a reversionary clause in it in September of 2022. Mm -hmm. The council at that time didn't want to revert it back to C2 because they said they were working on a multi-review of zoning. So the petitioner has already asked for that, and that was right. basically kind of sidelined, we'll say. All right. So, because I mean. Comp plan coming. Comp, comp plan's yeah. coming, exactly. And we can address that then. Mr. President, I make a motion that we approve uh, the use variance approval for 6110 Broadway. Second. A motion by Mr. Pettit with a second by Mr. White for approval of this petitioner. Special exception, M2 Limited Industrial Corridor District. Open for discussion. Mr. President. Mr. White. This is my area, and I am welcoming this type of uh, business to kind of lift that place up because we, we it's needed, just like Sean like said. And, and Sean's been involved in this situation. But I was going to say the same thing to you, Mr. Anderson, was that uh, Mr. Mr. <coughs> Israel, um, has to get this thing turned back to, 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 to uh, commercial. Yes. Retail, I'm sorry, retail. Um, because what it does is slow the process down tremendously when people got to wait for it to go to the BZA. And that's one of the reasons I'm here tonight, even though I don't have a signed lease, because if I keep going with this, Foreign Mills is going to leave. Yeah. And so I've got to have these pieces put together, and sometimes right. the pieces have to Mr. Fit. Anderson, what do we need to do with your clients to start the process of getting this back into retail? Because of, other than that, Mr. President, we're going to be coming up the here. The council every... has the right to revert it back pursuant to the ordinance from 2018 by a vote. It's right in that ordinance. I'd be happy to sit down with whoever wants to talk about it, but that's well, what Well, yeah, I'd like to get that on the agenda because I just think this kind of just... Well, it would be very well, helpful with all the small... I was out there again today, and there's a lot of small vacancies in between. Mm -hmm. The Trader VIX is now open. They have a sign up, so they're starting. But there's space on the other side of the dollar store that's vacant all the way down. There's space next to this store. And if I have to come back every time to get another variance for this, it slows down that process, it discourages people, and they go look somewhere else. Because you know the little tenant, he, mm -hmm. he needs to make money. He's, sure. He's you know, Mr. Started. Anderson, here, here's why I'm saying that, not because I'm a councilman, but sometimes uh, we have to do other things besides being a councilman. And by me uh, having interest in the, in the crossroad uh, plaza to uh, to, to kind of renovate it or redevelop it. Actually, I was looking, and other people I know were looking at um, some of those smaller stores. Uh, actually, we're kind of starting that process real soon. So I will get back with you, but again, I would like to come back to the fact that we don't, we don't need to go through three hearings, basically, to, even though it takes a month, it's, it's, it takes a lot of time off the clock. Cost lawyer fees, too, so my client well, would be happy. Well, then maybe we need to stall it a little bit more so you can make some money. <laughs> no, let's, I'd rather that we got it taken yeah. care of. Yeah. So, Mr. Bearden, please add this topic to our, um, our March 28th Town Council workshop that we're going to have at 4 o'clock. Yep. And we'll discuss it. And then, Joe, get us your opinion on what we need to do to change this back to commercial. Okay. Any other discussion on this topic? Hearing none, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries, Mr. Anderson. Thank you very much. Moving on tonight to new business. Any new business before us? Hearing none, old business. Any old business? Uh, you're probably referring to open to the public, and we'll get to that in a minute. Is that what you meant? Public okay. comment. Uh, we have no special presentations tonight, so public comment. Please approach the microphone, state your name and address for the record. Please approach the microphone here, the podium, and then uh, state your name and address for the record, guys. I'd be happy to hear from you. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Monica Burke. 
Um, and my question is for President Rick Bella and also for the Chief of Police. I was wondering where we're at on the animal control building situation and why they didn't hire Officer Foster from the Geary Police Department for animal control. Because I heard that he applied. Well, we really don't just, yeah, we really don't discuss personnel matters out in the public like this. So okay. we're, I then, think we're reviewing applications right now. We haven't made a decision yet. Okay. okay. And then what are you guys going to do in regards to the animal control building? And have you guys found any shelters or rescues that would be willing to take the animals from Miraville? We have not. I'll let the chief speak to that. He's checked with many, many locations. Chief? Sure, no problem. I've been checking and calling uh, various shelters and um, humane societies. There's a couple that haven't given me an answer yet. They haven't given me a no, which is good. But um, everything's at max capacity right now. It's not just a problem that Maryville's having. It's a problem that a lot of the municipalities are having. They just can't find placement for dogs because people are unfortunately um, dumping dogs at an alarming rate now. Mm -hmm. but one of the things that we are looking at doing is we are looking at... Um, creating an ordinance that's going to, uh, uh, somebody's gonna be subjected to a big fine if they get caught dumping dogs in Maribel. Oh, good, they should. So that's, uh, that's one of the things that we're working on. Um, but as far as shelters, they're all full, but some of them are willing to help, but that's all still being discussed and worked on. And what about an animal control building for to house the animals here in Maryville? That's something I couldn't, I, I don't have, I couldn't tell, tell Mr. you. Mr. Minchuk, do you want to take a little that bit? one? Yes. We I have can. a couple ideas stirring on that, and we'll share that with you. We've had several meetings with several different people in reference to building a shelter right here in town um, to house our own needs. <coughs> of course, if we build a new building, or when we build a new building, that's going to take some time. So we're going to have to think of a permanent um, plan and a temporary plan. Um, we are currently in the process of doing that, so I really don't want to come out and say what it is because things can go backwards or forwards at this time. Hopefully within a couple of weeks here, maybe a little bit more, I'll have a definite answer for you, but though I can assure you those wheels are turning. Things are happening. It's not going to the wayside whatsoever. Um, it's just a matter of what we get and when we get it. And you guys are going to make that into an ordinance to find people hefty when they do, <coughs> when they are caught dumping animals at an alarming rate? Yes. If, yeah, if yes. somebody's physically caught dumping an animal, oh yeah, that'll definitely be dealt with. Absolutely. And are they going to be arrested or are they just going to be cited? It depends on the situation, man. Yeah, mostly cited. It's not really a breaking a law type effect, you know, issue. So. That's, it, that's not considered mm -hmm. animal abuse and neglect? That's why I said it depends on the situation. Yeah, it depends oh. what they're doing. I was just curious. Thank you so much. Thank you, Monica. Right. We'll keep you guys informed, believe me. Thank you. But the wheels are turning, which is way more than we were a month ago, right? I guess so, yes. And I will, I will share this with you. We talked about funding tonight. Yes, we did. In the Redevelopment Commission workshop. So that was actually on the agenda, and Mr. Pettit brought it up, and we discussed it. So... Yeah. Sure. So it was discussed tonight too that we're we're still looking for whomever yeah. who can take dogs even temporarily. Yeah. So we we can afford to build the building and what Jeff has worked on in Pawsville. We can do that through the redevelopment commission. The problem and why we're not pulling the trigger is what we would refer to as the operation at the O&M, the operation and maintenance. And we need an entity to partner with the town uh, that, can, that can staff and handle that operation. Yeah. yeah it's not Ms. just a physical building. We yeah. have to worry about everything that goes with that, of course. Mr. President. Mr. White. You, uh, do we have some preliminary costs on that? No, we don't yet, Leonard. Yep. OK, thank you. Go ahead, sir. Thank you, very much. you bet. Go ahead, sir. Good evening, President Bella. City Council members, community members, and esteemed guests. My name is Macy O'Rainey. I'm a Maryville resident of the Prairie Creek Housing Association, as well as Indiana Trio president. Before I say anything else, I want to use a moment of privilege to say happy International Women's History Month. It's an opportunity to recognize and celebrate 
all of our females that have stood on the front lines for justice, equality, and, a and sustain our democratic way of life. So I want to recognize International Women's History Month. Also, I come to stand in front of you, uh, not only as Indiana Trio president and a Maryville resident, but also to offer a weather forecast as it relates to the educational climate of the city of Maryville and the state of Indiana. Uh, there, we have a current bill in the House right now sponsored by uh, Earl Harris of East <laughs> Chicago and Senator Eddie Melton of Gary. Um, everything wrapped around 21st century scholars. As you know all too well that student loan debt is at an all-time high in this nation and being able to take advantage of what the state of Indiana is offering for our young people to transition from high school to college, being part of the 21st century scholars is landmark legislation that offers free room board and tuition for Indiana residents that sign up for 21st century scholars. And in the House right now, they are, they are lobbying for auto enrollment, which means that students can enroll for 21st century scholars uh, all year round. The enrollment is concurrent. So we're looking for a final decision for approval of 21st century scholars uh, that will, of course, encompass tuition, room and board at all public Indiana-based universities. It has everything to do with the educated workforce in the state of Indiana, and it's so important that we keep our thumb to the pulse of the quality of education of our young people in the town of Maryville, because it has everything to do with an educated and skilled workforce now and in the future. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Maceo. Rainey. Yes, sir. Good evening. I'm Paul Mulligan, Ward 6, the preserved subdivision off 85th and Mississippi. There comes a point after so many calls to code enforcement that one asks oneself, am I that neighbor who is turning into a, a nuisance, <laughs> calling and calling about same things. What I'm talking about is in our subdivision, it's gotten out of control as far as cars. We have about 95 to 100 pretty nice homes with two and a half car garages at each home. But some people have elected to use those garages as storage areas and park in the street instead. They don't even park on the apron, park in the street. Our, uh, thanks to our councilman, we had uh, uh, enacted an ordinance where you can only park on one side of the street. Some people ignore that. And they've been ticketed and code enforcement has uh, urged them to cooperate, but they don't. Some people are so belligerent and just blatantly ignorant, they choose to pay the fine or ignore the ordinances that you have put in place anyway. This has really gotten out of hand because it lends itself to getting in the way of our safety, fire protection, police, the school bus can't come down through there if too many cars are parked. The school bus can no longer turn around in my cul-de-sac because new neighbors park out in the cul-de-sac. And you try to talk to them and reason with them and they you know, really get angry and it's causing friction between neighbors. Nobody <laughs> wants that. Nobody wants to tell you what to do with your garage. If you want to store your furniture in there instead of your car, people have come in and decided that uh, that's what they want to do. I am suggesting for the sake of peace, harmony, uniformity, and common sense that the Maryville Town Council come up with an educational program that urges people to buy into the idea that proper parking and, and the number of cars you have uh, helps everybody limit 
what you want to do versus what is good for everybody. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Excuse me, sir. I, I, I did have a question. For, uh, question. Um, when you said these, uh, the garages are packed with uh, like storage units, are these at attached to the homes? Yes. yes. So does that create a fire hazard for that home? We already, just, had, we already had fire in the neighborhood, didn't we, Paul? Oh, yeah. They're still working on that house. They're still working on that house. Yeah. So there's a potential that it could be another fire there. Well, this was fireworks, Leonard. They put the fireworks <laughs> in, the, in the trash can and put the trash can next to the house. Wow. And it went up. Yeah, it was I know quite a people in our neighborhood July. who spend mm -hmm. in excess of 2000 to $3,000 every 4th of July buying their own for fireworks in this town. This town budgets, what, $30,000 to uh, put on a display and you can get in there for five bucks? Come on. Yeah, the, the reason I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. President, the reason I'm asking this question is because I didn't know if it was something that our, um, maybe our, our amendment of an ordinance um, saying that you can't have it 100% for it, especially if it's creating, say for instance, the house catch on fire on the inside and you don't have no way out but to go through the garage and now all of a sudden you've got all this stuff out here, it really creates a, uh, a very dangerous situation, not only for the homeowners, but even having our guys come out there to, to address that. So I, I just maybe in the, in the future we want to see what yeah, kind well, of we, My call the sack alone, Paul, we had those people, those brand new people came into 87th and were parking on the grass. I sent Vicky out. I gave I gave them a couple weeks. I knew they were new, and they're starting to park on the on the driveway. The question becomes to Mr. Svetnov is the definition of a, of a garage and an accessory building, and whether or not we can we can regulate that. Again, if if it's attached, it's part of the house. If it's detached, it's an accessory building, and can we can we regulate that on private property? I don't I don't know that we can. Just it's, one more thing, Sean. I'm I'm uh, I'm hearing you, but. Regulating and forcing people and fining people and all of that is, is one thing, but don't we need to take it a step further and, as I say, get people to buy into the idea somehow that what they do affects everybody else? Uh, I told my wife Denise three years ago, so watch, watch where this is going. Somebody's going to drive a semi-tractor in here, and sure enough, Three months ago, there was a semi-tractor parked three doors from me. A limousine, a, a, a small bus. Uh, some guy's got a, a S-Class Mercedes parked in front of the sign that says no parking inside the street. Just total defiance. And when you get people with that kind of attitude um, that have uh, unlimited revenue, Money's not going to do it. Something else has to happen. Now, I don't have the answer, but I'm, I know amongst all of these intellects, we can come up with something. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, I think. <laughs> I think thank you for that. Shonda Flowers, 6137 uh, Connecticut Street. Um, to, interesting enough, just to piggyback off of this gentleman, um, not just that conversation, but on what I'm hearing, I'm excited that the police department is expanding. That's wonderful. And with that, I'm sure we're going to get even more tickets now that we have um, different um, communities that's coming together to make sure we're enforcing what some of the codes that are being violated, such as some of the ones that they're speaking about. Um, I just want to also put out there, as you all are considering um, and meeting with regards to um, temporary shelters for animals, that you also add to that maybe um, possibly coming back to the table with the court so we can work together to try to enforce some of the ordinances that we are updating, some of the ordinances that we probably need to improve as well as working with the police department in an effort to try to help gentlemen 
such as this because we do have ordinances that are already on the books. And so with the lack of conversation that we've had with regards to counseling accord, which is why we're in the current situation we're in, it's just never too late to possibly see what can the court do for the town. Because it sounds like as we continue to grow, when you think of citizens that are now confused when officers from Maryville are pulling them over and writing tickets and sending payments to the court, that in essence I took payments over over to Hammond because that's indeed where their tickets ended up. So maybe we can again possibly come to the table. It's just never too late to try to work together for the betterment of our community along with our citizens. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Brian Messart, 201 East 68th Place. Um, I'd like to address the idea that a uh, community center as a business, the community center isn't really a business. And part of the issue is, is we're talking about hiring uh, more people over there. And I've been over there quite a bit. I've tried to involve myself over there. And there's a lot of nice equipment there, but the one thing that there is not there is a person to help you learn how to use free weights, how to use the machines, how to safely use the climbing wall. To say that this community center is for the children is, it's actually for the children who can afford to pay to play on the basketball court. Because if you want to use the basketball court, you have to pay. There are certain things that you can use for free, and there are certain things you can't use for free. There are certain times you can be there, there are certain times you can't be there. And while we have this large building that provides a space for us to do positive things, there aren't a lot of clubs that meet there. There aren't a lot of people who come in because people really don't even understand what the rules are and when you can be there, when you can't be there. And it suffers to the de de detriment of the other parks. Rosenbaum Park is not the only park in Merrillville, and it's not the only one that has a shelter that is in disrepair. As a matter of fact, the bike trail over by Lowe's, where there is a culvert that goes underneath behind Lowe's under I-65, there are huge cracks in the ceiling of that culvert. At what point in time is someone going to actually go out there and look at what it would take to fix that? We need to Which start culvert, Brian? Under I-65? Yes. That's the box culvert. That's state right-of-way. That's state's responsibility. It's their bridge. Uh, I, so we can con we'll contact NDOT and have them go out there, absolutely. Yeah, that's, but that, that would be their responsibility, I believe, Pat, wouldn't it? Well, we'll check into it. We'll check into it. Yeah, I didn't realize it was, that's, that's a sec, there's sections, just like on uh, the Erie Lackawanna, US 30 going over the Erie Lackawanna, it's the same kind of construction. My, my point is, is that there are people who actually work for the Parks Department who have actually acknowledged that that is a problem. So who is responsible for fixing it and whatnot is fantastic, but the problem has been identified and we need to move forward with a solution before people get hurt. And the whole idea of uh, having an animal control shelter, but we don't have anyone to operate it. It's the same way as having a, a, a gymnasium without any coaches or anybody to tell you how to use uh, gym equipment. We're not, we need to start thinking a little bit more outside the box and towards you know, how we can positively impact the thing. And our, the gentleman here, it, it's nice to, have education and because people need to be educated we don't communicate very well I've been here for years now complaining about the communication it's pretty simple there's cars on the streets you give them a couple of uh, violations fantastic uh, three strikes you're out start towing the cars our, our snow plows need to get through our garbage trucks need to get through our buses need to get through just start towing the cars and it's it seems pretty simple Thank you. Well, Lisa, do you want to comment at all on his comments about the center since we do have a trainer there and we have I mean, we do things. have a personal trainer that comes in there now. Um, we also, um, I know, personally, I know how to, um, you know, uh, teach people to go on the climbing wall. Um, unfortunately, you know, there are times where our staff is overwhelmed 
um, with things that they are doing. So it is a little hard sometimes to have the people that we need there to do the climbing wall. Um, but as far as learning the equipment, um, you can, there's, there's signs on the equipment to show how to do it, but there are also um, people that we can reach out to and we're trying to get them to come in and do like a, a training where you can come in and learn how to use the equipment. I just need to get with him. Um, it's been very hard because with his schedule um, and with everything that we've had going on here, it's been very hard to do that. Um, but we can, I can, I can reach out to Midwest Fitness that supplies our equipment, and and maybe have him come out and maybe we can do a couple of, you know, night, nighttime or daytime training sessions on the equipment. I can check That'd into great. it for you. The, the, the point oh. is no disrespect to you or the parks department. The point is this: we should have someone who is paid to be there to do this, not worry about having uh, somebody from somewhere else come in and, and once a week or whatever. We should have someone, when I as a resident walk into the parks department, into that building and say, hey, I, I want to know how to use this machine or I want to know how to safely ride the bike. Oh, this is how you do it. We don't even have training videos where it's like, oh, here, if you watch this online or whatnot, this is how you use the equipment. Nothing. And so you, I stopped coming to the center because it's like there's a lot of nice equipment, but Thank you. Go ahead, sir. Hello, my name is Eric Janier. I live at 3031 West 58th Avenue. And he had a uh, hot uh, button with me at the park, uh, the uh, community center. I've been working out my entire life, and I'll never forget when I was here at a community meeting and mentioned uh, that the community center was going to be free. And I mentioned at that particular time that we couldn't afford free. I go to the community center, and one of the things that I see is that a lot of the equipment, although it is new, is already in disrepair. Uh, so I really believe that we need to revisit that free uh, to the community. When you go to Crown Point, Highland, Cherville, every one of those communities charges a fee to their members and non-members. I don't believe that the town can afford it, particularly uh, considering the fact that we're considering raising our sales taxes by 1%. Now, I, me, I'm a CPA by profession. I help people with money. And uh, one of the things that irks me, because I've been helping people reduce their taxes, but on the other hand of the spectrum, the town is taxing people. So it's like a constant battle between yeah, that's the government not, that's and that's not That's not really accurate, sir. No. We're not raising the sales tax by it. Well, it, it's food, food and beverage taxes. So you've got it proposed. I don't know if the right. Senate or the uh, governor has actually signed it. but No, it not at all. It hasn't even cleared the, the right. House yet. Right, but just the fact that we had to ask for it, I believe that there are some things that we can do before we have to impose a tax on everybody that's in the community and within the community mm -hmm. to fund something that people are using it should be funding it for. So before we ask everybody to pay for it, we should be doing some practical things ourselves. So the, the thing in regards to uh, training, uh, if people were paying a fee, or actually you can have personal trainers that can work out of that place and show you how to use the equipment uh, on, on a regular basis. There are different things you can do just outside. We just have to think outside of the box. We can't just think about tax and spend uh, because the community center is lovely now, but I do, I'm absolutely opposed to a 1% tax. Uh, Lake County opposed a one, uh, implemented a 1% tax when I moved here. And now we're talking about a 1% tax. I'm concerned that the next thing that's going to happen is our property taxes are going to go up. And it's going to make us less competitive uh, to the other areas. Most of the people that I have that are friends that are moving from Illinois, uh, when they talk about moving to uh, this northwest Indiana area, they're talking about Sherrillville, Crown Point, and every other place besides Merrillville. And if we have taxes that are comparable to uh, Illinois, this is not going to be the destination for those dollars. So With all due respect, sir, we have the third lowest tax rate in Lake County in Maryville. Yes. But we have attractive businesses. We have the first million square foot building. That company picked Maryville for a reason. All yes, those all those companies space. in Ameriplex picked it for a reason. Yes, you We just heard in our redevelopment commission. We just heard in our redevelopment. That's why we're doing it. Hang on, sir. We just heard in our redevelopment workshop that our tax rate went from 2.47 down to 2.44. Sure. Doesn't help our TIF districts, but that's what was reported by our financial advisor. Sure. So the tax rate in Maryville has, in fact, gone down. It, 
it's going down temporarily now. But what direction is it going to go in if we can keep implementing uh, tax breaks to larger corporations mm -hmm. because you're basically shifting the burden from the tax pit mm -hmm. from those individuals to the homeowners because somebody's got to pay for the road. Somebody's going to have to pay to put the salt down on the road. One of the things that also irritates me since I've been here, we do not adequately salt our streets. And from people... From people that work in the salt department, we've been ordering the same amount of salt, it sounds like, for decades because we can't afford to pay more. So we can't afford to give, just give away uh, things to individuals and corporations. Everybody should be forced to pay their fair share of operating the town of Merrillville. And the reason that people are moving here from Illinois is because their taxes are ridiculous. That's why I moved here. So we didn't have to give them a tax break. They would have came here with or without a tax break. Merrillville is not some horrible town where we got to basically give somebody something to move here. This is just northwest Indiana is a gem. We don't have to give it away. And if we're giving people 10-year runways in order to uh, start paying a full amount of taxes, that's transferring, ultimately is going to transfer the burden to taxpayers, the homeowners, me. I'm not getting a tax break. I own a business. I've got several employees that work for me. I've been here for eight years. I've never asked for a tax break because I believe people need to be treated equally. So when they come to the community center, they, they should pay. I don't care if it's $10 a month. Somebody should pay something so that we can afford to maintain that facility without charging an excess uh, or um, charging everybody else to pay for somebody else's bills and make the community less attractive to other people and businesses. So I can go on and on. It just, uh, it's just a hot topic, uh, a hot button issue. The community center is lovely, and I thank you all uh, for building it and taking the initiative to do it, but we need to think outside of the tax and spend box in terms of how we fund it. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Okay. Any other public comment? Good evening, everyone. Good evening, President. Um, this is my first time being at a town council meeting, so I'm a, little, I'm a little nervous. Don't um, be nervous. I've been putting in public records requests. Now, I've put in one, I've gotten one back. Now, I've been putting one in for four months. I haven't heard a word from anyone. Not one single word. Okay. Now, what do I need to do to get my uh, public record request? Hey, when you say you put it in, who are you putting it into, and how have you been doing that? <clears throat> well, I've been doing it online. I've okay. been doing it through Linda. Through what? Through uh, Linda. Linda? Yeah. Okay. And I that, that could check into that. Um, I've put the second one in in December. This is mid-March. Okay. I haven't heard, haven't heard any of that from anybody. First time hearing about it, we'll certainly look into it, though. Yeah. If you can stick <coughs> around afterwards and give your name to Pat. Well, I can give him the record request right now. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah. After I the have meeting, it in my hand right now. Let's do it after the meeting. Okay. Thank you. That's, uh, that's all Excuse I me, sir. Yes. Uh, your request... <coughs> For uh, documents, did you do it under the uh, Freedom of Information Act? Yes, I am. Okay, you have no response. No. Well, I've gotten a few responses. The last month and a half, crickets. Nothing. Thank you. No okay, response thank you. back from the. Uh, I want to. I don't want to say town manager, but she says she works in town management. I haven't heard back from her. I've actually called her. She transferred me to the lawyer. The lawyer told me to send it to him, which is not the process. The process is to go to her, then go to him. So I resent it to her. I have heard nothing else since. Well, we'll look into it. That's all I can say at tonight, sir. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Is there any other public comment tonight? Seeing none, announcements. We have the Plan Commission public meeting March 21st at 6.30. The uh, Juneteenth committee meeting on March 23rd. What time was that, Rich? 11 o'clock. At 11 o'clock a.m. The uh, town council workshop at 4 o'clock on the 28th of March. The uh, town council meeting is going to be also on the 28th at 6.30. And redevelopment commission meeting is March 28th at 6.15. <coughs> Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. We are adjourned. Thank you all. Thank you.